Okay, I'm going to show you how to put a handle on a fishing rod here. Um, there's basically three different types of handles I'm going to be covering. First, it's going to be a deckhand style handle. The second is going to be a straight uh, high plum with real seat handle or, or EVA with real seat handle. And the uh, third is going to be a, a split grip. So I'm going to start out with the, uh, the deckhand style because the easiest one. And basically all you need is a cork cape. Comes in a big roll. Um, you could buy it by the inch or by the foot, but I just buy a roll and it usually lasts for two or three rods. Um, when putting it on your blank, it's very simple because it's adhesive back. So you basically just peel off the adhesive and you start with the top of your thing below the bottom of the blank and then just wrap it around at an angle. It doesn't have to be a real sharp angle, it's going to kind of find its own natural way of doing it. And um, I wouldn't worry too much if the end peels off because you're going to put a piece of tape along the bottom here to hold this in place. You can just get your masking tape and wrap around there. And you're just going to fit it snugly next to each other. Make sure it doesn't double up or there's any gaps. You just go to whatever length the handle is you want. Um, I'm not going to put a cork tape handle on this rod, so I'm just showing you how to get started. But once you get to the end, you just tear it and then put another piece of masking tape and you cut it uh, straight with a razor blade afterwards. And if you want a thicker handle, you can put a couple of uh, layers on it. If you're going to put a second layer on it, I would offset it so your seam is not in the exact same spot. So I'd, I'd go half the distance here, which will mean that if it won't want to peel up, because if you put it on the same spot, it tends to want to do that. Sorry about that. Um, once you have the cork tape on, you got a couple of options of what you can do. You can just uh, use a small piece of shrink tube uh, at the top, cut it on there, shrink it on to hold the position, the butt cap will hold the back end on. Or you can do the, I don't know if this is going to work, the entire handle and shrink tube. And this is a, a, a Batson product, I'm not sure if it's a Alps or, or pork gas, but it's a, like one inch shrink tube. You just slide it right over to your cork tape. Fits a little better if there's not something on there already. They make different sizes. I think this is kind of tight. And I'll just get my uh, heat gun set pretty warm and just blow it on there. Um, you can't, you won't send it with this, so just keep doing it until it gets nice and tight. Gets all the creases out and everything else, and um, you'll be good on that. Um, and I'll just do that the length. Then what I did was I did a decorative overwrap where I actually flex coated from the winding check onto the shrink tube itself and I wrapped on top of that and I put another layer of flex coat. It's a real nice finish. Nice clean look and on the back you can just slide your butt cap on. Um, another alternative to just plain cork tape is put a wind grip uh, wrap handle over it. That's what I did on this, this jig stick. Even with two layers the uh, diameter of the rod was a little bit small for me and I wanted to bulk it up a little bit so I wrapped wind grip on here. And I use the same section of the shrink wrap here, put it on the butt, and another piece on the front there, and you can see I actually uh, glassed up onto that. So it can be a nice, real clean fish. This is a Revelation Musky Rod that was a little heavy for bass fishing, so I'm going to use it as a jig stick. But it's got that smaller diameter blank, so I built it over a couple layers of cork, added some wind grip to it, and it's now a, a nice, clean jig stick. And with all these, you're just going to slide your butt cap over the cord, uh, sorry, the uh, cork, the shrink wrap, or the wind drip, or whatever. Just make sure and get your butt cap size will fit over it. You got a nice easy handle. Okay, the uh, next handle style I'm going to show you is also pretty easy. Um, it's the second easiest. is uh, just a straight piece of uh, high one or EVA foam with a real seat and another piece in front of it. This is a, a spinning rod I'm building for my father and he doesn't really need a real fancy uh, handle so he likes a simple thing and uh, so he needs a butt cap, a uh, piece of high pawn, a real seat and a foregrip. Um, these pieces of uh, EVA are shaped appropriately ready to the blank that I got with the diameter of the uh, of the uh, of the hole. Um, if some of the EVA comes with a smaller diameter that you're going to need so you're going to need to use the uh, uh, Dream Reamer to make the opening larger. I don't know if I have a sample here. I might not. You, 
you can see the difference in diameter between these two pieces here, I think. Um, well, this is kind of extreme. You can ream this out to be considerably larger than it is and actually fit a smaller piece over a larger diameter blank. And I'm going to show you how to do that right here. Okay, I'm going to show you how to uh, install one of these, uh, these hard uh, EVA grips. Um, unlike the softer ones, they're more like Hypalon that will spread as you put them over the rod. These actually have to be cored out to the dimensions of the blank you're putting it on. Um, just to show you an example here, this is a foregrip for my rod. The way it's set up right now, I'm only getting it, my handle's not going to be anywhere near that big. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to ream this out and um, to do that, I have these uh, bats and uh, they're forecast uh, dream reamers. They come in a set of four with different shapes and they're tapered so you, you can start from small and work their whip to big. The smallest one's got a screwdriver handle, the bigger ones will go on my power drill. And what I'll do with those is I can take that, uh... okay so I magically lost my, uh, my thing there, I found it again. But basically you can see the diameter on here, I don't know how clear that is is much smaller than the diameter we need for this piece which is closer to that so to make this larger I'm going to actually ream it out with the uh, reamer but to get to the size I need before I start reaming this thing out I need to find out what the size of the hole I need to make is so basically this is going to be on the foregrip of my rod and um, I have a similar handle configuration right here so, let's see the advantage of having other rods that you like to handle length on. This is basically the same thing. And I could tell that the foregrip is going to start right about here on this rod. I can put that out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the diameter of the blank right about there. And that's a... Uh, the actual uh, amount of inches or whatever doesn't really matter. What's going to matter is uh, comparing it to the reamer that I'm going to want to use to ream it out to that size. So you're going to want to be able to fit it. And this looks like the, the right size right about here, but it's not all the way down. It's only about two-thirds of the way down this reamer. So basically I want to ream out the inside of that EVA grip this far down on this piece. Um, this fits on here, so I don't need to start with a smaller one. If this was too big to put on here, I would start with this one, core it out till it went all the way down there, and it was big enough to put the next piece in, and I'll do it down to there. So, let me get my drill. This is really simple here. I've got a uh, trash can to catch the uh, stuff. Now, what's important is to always use it because since it's tapered small to large, you always want to have the grip in the direction it's going to be on the rod. This goes towards the front of the rod, this goes to the back, so this part of the hole will be slightly bigger so it will match the, uh, the uh, taper of the rod. So basically just stick it in and start turning. And basically go down as far as you need to go. Go a little further I think. There we have it. Now, it's kind of messy, like I said, so you want to do this outside. Okay, I'm knocking stuff down as usual. But now I can slide this down almost all the way to where I want it. You want it to be a little snug, and you can slide down to the last few inches. As you can see here, this needs to come down about another four or five inches, and that should slide down no problem at all. Once I uh, put a little force on it, you can get a little bit of expansion. Okay, whether you have uh, had to ream your piece out or it came the right size already, um, when putting a handle on the rod, you're going to have to kind of map out where each piece is going to go. And um, the first spot you're going to have to worry about is where, how far up does the butt cap go. So I'm going to uh, have the wrong butt cap. I'm going to put this uh, butt cap on the rod here. Jam it on there, and that's a pretty tight fit, so I'm not going to have to shim that up really. And I can see that the top is right at the uh, top of the R there on this sticker here. And you can take the sticker off and leave it on. It's really up to you. 
I'm going to uh, I'm going to mark that with my china bar here to make sure that my high lawn or sorry my EVA does not go any further down than that. So the EVA that I have, while it's uh, got a big gauge, it doesn't slide all the way down. It only goes about that far, and I need to bring it down that much more. It'll spread that much out, but what I need to do is I need to get some epoxy and get it in there and use that as a lubricant to get it to slide down. So the way to put the epoxy inside of this, a lot of times you would think you would just need to put it where the handle's going to go. But if you do that, the front edge of the handle will just squeegee it all out of there, and there will be no epoxy in this part of your handle at all. So I'll let it slide down to its natural stopping position, and I'll mark the top end of that with my china marker again. And then what I'm going to be doing is putting uh, epoxy on a rod starting here and working all the way down so that it has something to slide down on and it's going to be on the inside of the thing. With that much epoxy, it tends to make a mess um, as all the excess gets squeegeed out. So you're going to want to have some uh, denatured alcohol and a couple of rags to clean off the blanket. Uh, acetone doesn't work real well because it can ruin and damage uh, the uh, finish of the blank, but the denatured alcohol seems to work fine. Uh, for epoxy, I'm using a U40 Rod Bond, which is a pretty easy going uh, epoxy. Unlike Flexco and other things like that, this is a two part, but if you're slightly off on your measurement, it'll still set up just fine. So, um, I'm going to get some stuff ready, I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, what I did was I got out uh, some of my epoxy here and I uh, use just a piece of cardboard and popsicle stick and I got two fairly equal amounts and like I said it doesn't need to be exact. The basically all you do is you just stir it together. Again this doesn't have to be real thorough. It's really great epoxy and it makes a good lubricant to slide your handle piece down too which is nice. So now that I got it mixed up I'm going to get my rod blank I've got my mark here where the uh, high plant is, and I'm just going to uh, apply this epoxy to the blank directly. Try to do this without making a giant mess here on video. But you don't really need a super thick coat, you just need to get it everywhere. I want to make sure I get it all the way up to the line. So I'm just spreading it down. Get a little more. And again, this, once you get down here, this epoxy is not going to be in there anyway. This helps it slide down so it doesn't get stuck. And you can actually capture a lot of this epoxy afterwards with your uh, popsicle stick and reuse it on your real seat or whatever other part of the rod you're doing next. So, I'm going to way down here. Again, you want to make sure not to make it any past your line because you want the butt cap to not. Uh, you want to have really put the butt cap on. There we go. I got a coat of it pretty much everywhere there. So, now that I have this all coated up, I'm going to slide my uh, EDA on. And the key is once it stops, to kind of twist it around so you get the, um, especially the top, you want to squeeze it and make sure you get the epoxy everywhere on the inside. That way it's the inside is covered with epoxy. And then you just push, you might have to push downward, get it down to where you want it to go. And I can almost slide. Let's try not to stop on the way down. This is Got enough flex here and I'm good. Okay. So like I said, I had a lot of extra here. I can uh, save that for when I do my uh, real seat. But I can see that I am uh, actually probably a little further down than I need to be. But close enough, I guess. If you're going to do too far, you can always pull it back a little bit. Twist and pull. 
I'm sure that's probably pretty good. Yeah, we need another tiny bit further here. There we go. So that's about that. Now it's time to get some denatured alcohol here and it's cleaned up. Now having the epoxy on the on the EVA handle itself is not an issue. No problem with that. It'll clean it right off. So I think you can start with the worst of which is back here. Now these shop rags aren't the best because they leave this um, What do you call it? Uh, little uh, feathers, lint. Oh, I got another rag here I've used it before. So I'm going to clean all the epoxy off. And you know, if you get a little bit on there that you uh, you don't want later, you can always just um, sand it off if a little bit left on there. It's not a big deal to do that. You won't even uh, see the difference. You get real fine sand, uh, sandpaper. All right, let me get a little nose here. I'm going to clean the rod itself off. So start up here and get all that epoxy off there. Okay. That was pretty easy. So pretty much ready to go with that. Now let me just make sure that my butt cap is, uh, yeah. So I see I need to go a little bit further down. I can still do that, hopefully. There we go. So my butt cap's good, so if you move it down further, you want to make sure I clean off the uh, excess off the blank. Now, the next part is saving one is my real seat. And whenever you're doing a real seat, make sure that it has the hood on there. Some of the bait cast ones come with the hood separate, and I've actually assembled the rod forgetting to put that on there. So you always want to make sure that's assembled before. Now what you're going to find with the real seat is, it's too big, it's bigger than the blank. So what we're going to do is we're going to build that up with tape. And I'm just going to use some uh, a masking tape, and I want to figure out, I'm going to work with my China marker to get a spot at the top. So I want to lay out the, the masking tape so that it's, uh, it's even. It wouldn't be one of my videos if I wasn't dropping stuff. So, anyway, I know that I want a piece of masking tape near the front. It doesn't have to be right at the front of the real seat, but it needs to be near the front. So I'll put a piece there, and I'm just marking this out right now to see how many pieces of masking tape I need here. It looks like I'm going to need four. So, two, three. And what these are going to be, these are going to be arbors to uh, build up the blank so the real seat will fit properly. And you always want to start with the back one first. It's as easy as just rolling the, uh, the masking tape onto the rod. It's important to try and get it kind of straight. You can kind of check and see it's still, I need quite a bit more there, the big real seat. Depending on how close to a size of real seat comes, um, some will be real, you just need a couple layers, you don't need any. Sometimes you need quite a bit like this one. It's just how the blank is shaped. So I'm going to test that. Still pretty loose. So I'm going to keep adding masking tape until it's snug. And the reason you start with the bag is you can build them up as you go. So that's snug, it's almost too snug right there. So you can take a layer or two off. You don't need to take a whole ton off. So that's pretty good right there. It should be snug. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do these next three and I'm gonna do them in a row and it, they should all be snug. I'm gonna pause it while I do this so you don't have to sit through this whole thing. Okay, so uh, Something I didn't mention, but I've done already, which was in previous videos, I've already applied the tip. So I've already spined this rod and put the tip on. 
in the position it's supposed to be in, which is important to do before you do the real seat because you're going to want to have it facing the proper direction. So I applied the tape evenly across this. It goes on snugly, but you can still get it on without anything sliding. And I've mixed up some more epoxy. Let me close these before I drop everything. Um, so I'll have enough for the real seat and the handle for the forklift. So just like with the, the butt, you just want to evenly apply this, but you're going to want to make sure to get it in these low spots, fill those up with epoxy in between the, uh, the tape. Because that's going to be, you want there to be epoxy holding this real seat on everywhere, not just where the tape is building it up. And with everything else, it's most important to get it uh, applied at the very front and going back from there because your real seat is going to push the extra epoxy back as you go anyway. So, pretty good layer here so far. You know, the popsicle seat kind of run over the gaps to make sure it's you've got the epoxy filling them. So, there we go. I've got way more than I need on here. Take some of this off. Alright, now I'm going to slide down my real seat slowly. You can see I'm pushing out a lot of this epoxy. And it's best to get this extra epoxy out before you go all the way down to the base. Uh, this is pretty slow drying. It's got all the time in the world here. So it's easier to get it off there than it is to wipe it off the pipe one in a minute. Or the EVA, I'm sorry. And also you're going to want to make sure you're your knot is twisted up quite a bit so you don't get any epoxy in your threads. Okay, so now I'm going to slide down the rest of the way and I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Drag. My wife will let me spill that all over the floor in here. And we're just wiping off all the extra epoxy. It's real important to get it out of the out of the real seat threads especially because that's going to Cause trouble down the road if you don't. If there's a little bit in there once it sets up, you can still get it out, but it's a pain in the butt. That's one of these graphite seats. So there we go. Get it all cleaned up. Clean it off the handle as well. I'm gonna go through one more time after the whole handle put together and give it a thorough cleaning. But now it's time to line up my uh, real seat hood with my tip. And in this case. You can kind of eyeball it pretty easily. Yeah, you only get one shot at doing this, so I take my time. And if you really want to be specific about it, lay it in your rod bench. Tighten this up and then make sure that your tip is straight up. You'll see it straight up. I'm going to do my lift here. Push that back down. So that is pretty good right there. So that's ready to go. Now, while I'm at it here, I'm going to go ahead and put my foregrip on. This is shaped so the rounder part goes towards the front. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the uh, with the rear grip. I'm going to mark the top of this so I make sure I put the uh, epoxy all the way up to the top. I'm going to add my epoxy here. Grab the wrong end of the stick, which is wonderful. Yeah, so typical video train wreck here, guys. I'm going to get a different stick that doesn't have stuff all over it. Seems like every time you use a boxy or a flex coat or anything else, you start touching it and then you start touching yourself. Your hair and everything else and everything itches suddenly and you scratch it yourself and you suddenly you're covered with epoxy. So anyway, I'm going to start at the top where I made my mark and work my way down again like I did before. There's a bunch of other ways that guys view this. They put uh, denatured alcohol into the actual uh, 
they pour it into the handle as they're sliding it down make it slide easier and instead of using all this epoxy and you know there's a bunch of different ways to do it but you know I found that just doing it this way is fine I mean it cleans up as long as your stuff is sized properly it'll spread quite a bit and um, as long as you keep it going even you know you saw before on the, on the on my rear grip I had to stop at one point but um, it still slid down it's pretty forgiving stuff so anyway so I got it spread out got this up here now let's slide it down until my tip is covered and I'm gonna make sure I get it all through the raw here that way you can see since it's coming out of the top that means I got it covered all the way and I'm going to push it down, it snug, and then I'm going to clean this up. Oh, great. Since you were dropping these things right back in the stuff today here. Um, so like I said here, it could be a giant mess, but the stuff cleans up pretty easy, which is good. Now, I'm get my rag. And I wouldn't use your wife's good towels quality towel when doing this if you're gonna throw this stuff away when you're done with it. So get a little bit more. Put it on so soon. Clean it up. Clean the blank up. You've got time to work with this after you're done with this here, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's not going to set up on you for a few hours, so you can really get it cleaned up well. So, one of the things that happens sometimes when you slide that foregrip on is your real seat will move. So this is a great time to double check that your real seat is still in the position you were expecting it to be in. It might appear to be just that. So there we go, we've got a handle ready to go. Um, I've got a winding check here somewhere. Then I'm gonna slide down on top of it. So you're right up against here, but I don't need to do that right now because that does not need to be glued on. So there you go, one rod handle ready to be cleaned up and uh, put to use. Okay, the last handle tab I'm gonna show you how to do is a, a split grip handle. This is a rod that already has one on, it's pretty beat up and I'm probably going to replace it soon. This is composed of a piece that uh, matches up to the back of the real seat and then another piece that goes on the butt. The piece on the butt here has, uh, this is actually a two piece, it's the part that slides down and it has a, an EVA cap that goes on it to make it a complete butt. Or you can just use the butt cap and you can also use a, a shaped piece of EVA foam. You can also make your own by just taking a normal piece of EVA and cutting it to size and putting it on your rod and then shaping it yourself. And that's kind of what I'm going to show you here. So uh, let me get started. Okay, cutting your EVA is actually really easy to do if you use your Alps rod wrapper to do it. Basically what I've done is I just took my blank I'm going to be using and I tightened it into my lathe here and I slid the hype line or the EVA down as far as it would go just till it stopped and it was snug. You're not installing it here, you're just using this to brace it so you can cut it. And before cutting it I measured out I want a 4 inch section that's going to go behind the real seat and I want a 2.5 inch section that's going to go um, in the butt section in front of the butt cap. Cutting it is uh, very easy if you use a monofilament fishing line. This is 20 pound, which works really well for me. Um, it works better than a knife or anything else. And I'll cut a length of it. And I've already marked where I want to cut. I use my China marker to mark off the four inch mark there. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay this monofilament right on my cut spot. Not hard, just lay it on there lightly, hold it straight and start to spin the rod. Sorry that my camera cut out at a really inopportune moment there. I was uh, in the process of cutting this and I noticed it stopped. So I'm going to resume. I basically I'm just running it down the length of it here. And it'll get down to the blank and it'll stop. And it's not doing any damage to the blank. There we go. It separated out. And there is uh, my clean cut piece. Take this out of here now to show you. And that is cut perfectly 
round, flat, everything. So just run that, mo that mono line through there. You don't do any damage to the blank, and then you just slide the piece off you're not using once you've cut it down to size. Couldn't be any easier. Once you've done that, it's as easy as just installing any other piece of hype wand for the back section. You're going to slide it down as far as it's supposed to go using the same method of applying the epoxy and then pushing it down to where you want it. After that, rather than put the real seat on like you would with the solid piece of uh, EVA, you're going to measure to where you want to have your foregrip or your, the front part of your split grip in. Mark that and do the same thing with the uh, with the epoxy, slide that into place, and then you can apply your real seat above that, just like in the previous rod I showed you, in your foregrip if you want one. So basically just measure it out where the back section is going to go to the end, obviously, or to wherever your butt cap is. Clean off all the epoxy in between there and where you want your next section. And what I like to do is just mark the bottom of where it's going to go. Then I'll apply my epoxy like I normally would at the top, then slide that down clean the blank again and then install the real seat like in the previous uh, example and that's pretty much how to do a split grip. Now once you're the handle is dry and your split grip is applied you can shape it using a uh, sandpaper. What I'll do normally do is I'll start off with a drywall sanding screen to really this will really cut it and quickly change the shape and size of it so you want to be careful with it at first. And then once I have the area sanded down to that one, I'll progressively go to finer and finer sandpaper <coughs> using a 80 grit, 100 grit, and then eventually work my way to 400 grit to just smooth out the whole thing and you give yourself some real nice uh, shape. At the end of this video, I'll include a photo of this one when it's done. Um, the one important thing you want to do is anytime you're using sandpaper in your handle is put tape up against the edges of the handle far enough out so that if your sandpaper runs over you don't scratch up the blank. And you can do the same around your real seat so if you're, when you're sanding you don't accidentally sand the uh, coating off your real seat. I just use the same tape I use for everything else, a couple layers under, haven't had a problem yet. So it's a pretty easy deal. Thanks.